Greetings, cinephiles. Are you looking for a movie analysis podcast that stands above the rest? Then look no further than Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters. We analyze good movies, we analyze bad movies, and yes, we also analyze the in-betweens of the world of cinema. So if you like what you hear, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. And yes, my friends, we are 420 friendly. So when you listen to us, smoke smoke it it if you've got got it. it. And now... Here's a new episode of Collateral Gaming. The show starts right now. I'm Ashley Chancellor. And I'm Megan Gomez. This is Collateral Gaming. Welcome back, everybody, to Collateral Gaming, where we talk about good games, bad games, and everything in between. I hope y'all are having a good time, and let's get into uh, today's fun, fun little uh, stray game uh, talkative kind of points here. What are we doing today? That's right, folks. We are the only video game podcast that matters. We are 420 friendly, and we are podcasting in the United States. Uh, We are going to be talking about Stray, the video game, and I'm actually excited because uh, we we, kind of actually hit the timing on this. We had actually decided this before it was announced, but this month we are talking about two Game of the Year nominees, uh, that being Stray, God of War Ragnarok, and uh, even a couple of other games on the list we're going to be talking about. That's actually an excellent segue into our news, actually. So, uh, Game of the Year. Yes. Oh, my God. So for one, Stray got Game of the Year uh, nominee, which I thought was amazing for an indie developer because it's not the longest game. It's not the craziest, most beautiful game. I mean, there are some gorgeous moments in this game, but it's it's nothing too crazy. Yet this small, tiny developer got a Game of the Year award, which like props to them, gives them some applause. Like, that's amazing. Um, we've also got my baby Aloy. She's got a Game of the Year award, which it, absolutely um, every time I feel so bad for the developers at Gorilla because every time they drop an amazing game, all these other amazing games come out within a month yes. of each other. So like the first one was dropped with Breath of the Wild Breath and the then wild. the second one gets dropped with fucking Elden Ring. It's like, man, poor and, Aloy. And God of War. Yeah. And God of War. Yeah. Man, yeah, the Game of the Year nominees are a little bit surprising. Um, We'll talk about whether or not we think Stray deserves Game of the Year, but definitely a big win for indie developer B12 that their game got nominated. Uh, And, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting list. I mean, between that, we've got, of course, God of War, Ragnarok, Elden Ring, as we mentioned, Horizon Forbidden Mm -hmm. West, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and A Plague Tale Requiem. Um, I've not gotten into the Xenoblade series. I don't know much about uh, a Plague Tale Requiem, but you actually are pretty. Uh, you're familiar with that game. You said yes. So um, I've watched Agony play the first one, and I got into the second one a little bit myself. Um, that is a very, very good story game, which um, I think would be fun to cover on the podcast. Um, it's super, super, super interesting. Um, it's set in, of course, during the times of, you know, the plague and all of that. And it's a, it's a narrative story of a brother and sister and the sequel plays into that more. Um, very, very proud of those developers as well for, for getting that game. Um, cause the first one was kind of received a little bit. Um, it was like, Oh, okay. you know, this game's interesting, but whatever. But the fact that they got the second game as a game of the year nominee, like even just to get a nomination for that in general, if you don't win, which I think a lot of people think, you know, is like the biggest thing just to get a nominee against some pretty big developers, like, you know, with Ragnar, Rock and Horizon Forbidden West, you know, which only has two games, but Gorilla has a big standing at this point. Um, I think that's incredible. And and they they started out pretty indie as well. So yeah, for, for as far as me for Xenoblade, I haven't played it, but I know that Nintendo paid a lot of money to advertise it. So good for them for being able to do that. Cause um from what I've heard, they're good games. It's just not something that I've, you know, been getting into personally. I've been playing my way through Mass Effect, if I won't lie to you guys, because it was in seven day recently, which happy belated in seven day, all my Mass Effect fans. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, my buddy Steven actually, uh, he's, uh, he, he's a, he was into the Xenoblade games. In fact, I remember when the first uh, Xenoblade Chronicles game came out, uh, he was really excited about it. I kind of watched a little bit. And I'm a fan of JRPGs, so it's definitely something that's always kind of been in the back of my mind as a series I'd like to get into. I'm happy to see that they're still going strong. Uh, and as far as the Game of the Year uh, nominees go, uh, we have or will be covering four 
out of these six nominees. So yeah. that's pretty cool. And we will be finding out the results in December next month. So stay yeah. tuned for Collateral Gaming News uh, when that comes around because we'll definitely be talking about the winner. <laughs> I think it's going to be Ragnarok, but it could be Elden Ring. It, I, I don't you know what I've been seeing a lot of people posting about it and I don't think it's going to be Elden Ring because people are either voting Ragnarok or Forbidden West just because of the toxicity of the Elden Ring community which is something that I did want to talk about too because as much as Elden Ring is a good game that community is very like even just like the Dark Souls community it's very toxic um, and a lot of people are you know big fanboys and it's like you can't like if you're a woman trying to play or if you're no you, just, you know just anybody besides like a bro trying to play play it's like oh we'll get fucked it's like oh okay thanks guys like they're a very toxic community so i think the fact that all of the fandoms are banding up together and voting for each other's games after they vote for their own is pretty fucking awesome <laughs> i think your uh your brother probably knows quite a bit about that yeah 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 he does but yeah no i mean i i think it's a good list i mean i think a lot of these titles were expected i think uh, everybody knew it was going to come down between i think elden ring and god of war and we all knew for forbidden west you know d deserved the nomination at least um yeah i'm actually curious well i i think i probably know what the answer is but but what did you vote for or did you vote um so i voted three different times i voted <laughs> for <laughs> I voted once for Stray just to give it to him. I voted once for, actually, no, twice for Forbidden West. So I voted four times. Twice for Forbidden West and then once for Ragnarok. I haven't even played Ragnarok yet, but I love Santa Monica <laughs> Studios. So, yeah. There's actually a person in the Horizon for, uh, Horizon group who voted for Horizon 17 times. <laughs> nice. So, like, there's no uh, there's no cap on that. I wondered if, like, they would, like, recognize your IP address. But, no, you can continue to... Vote. I did it in different places personally, oh, but I yeah, see, I see. Okay. Okay. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, mm -hmm. you could probably also just clear your history and, and it would probably, or your website data and that would probably do it. But I voted once for God of War Ragnarok and I have played it and I do think it deserves it. Uh, that is yeah. my personal pick. If Elden Ring wins, no skin off my back. If any of the other titles win, I mean, Hey, uh, I, I think that Horizon Forbidden West, uh, is a good contender. I think it, 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 it deserves it. I, We'll talk about Strike because I think it's a great game. I just, we'll, we'll, I think we'll... it deserves the nomination, but yeah, I don't think yeah. it deserves quite the game of the year. But I think, yeah, for me, it's between Forbidden West and Ragnarok. Like, I haven't even touched Ragnarok yet, but I love the God of War series. I've loved it since game one, and we talked about this in the original. And I know we'll go into this in the, in the, um, Ragnarok, um, episode. Um, but yes. yeah, I'm definitely, um, definitely wanting to have either Ragnarok or Forbidden West win just because I love Gorilla so much in Santa Monica because they support each other so much and they've had developers like switch back and forth between the two and they just, there's no bad blood. Like they love that they're venturing out and like playing different games and like developing on different games together, which I think is so cool. So yeah, I mean, it is nice to see all the different, uh, PlayStation subsidiary studios, uh, interact. They're always very wholesome with each other, always congratulating each other on their releases. And, uh, yeah, I think it's a great environment now. Uh, so, so we'll, we will be talking about the game of the year awards. Once that happens, uh, we also have a little bit of sad news that I think does yeah. impact the gaming community. Rest in peace, Mr. Kevin Conroy, because in my opinion, that is the definitive Batman. I mean, I, I'm going to say that I think he, he, he was the definitive Batman over all live action Batman. And I love me some Robert Pattinson. I love me some uh, uh, Christian, Christian Bale. Bale. I love yeah. me some Michael Keaton. I like the idea of Ben Affleck as Batman. The execution, not so much. But um, yeah. Kevin Conroy, man. I mean, for his work towards the Arkham games in particular... Yeah, he's he's incredible, and I, it's it's sad to, that he passed. Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill, I think, are the definitive duo for uh, Batman and the Joker. Absolutely. I'm sure Mark Hamill is hurting right now, too. Poor thing. Yeah, uh, I want to say, okay, so I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, no, he's, uh, and, and Kevin Conroy has voiced Batman in quite a few other works besides the Arkham games, but uh, those are the ones that I have played in most extensively. They're great, fucking phenomenal games, and I love the talent that, that Kevin Conroy brought to them. He will be sorely missed by the video game industry, uh, by the animation industry, you know, the worlds of cinema, gaming, and pop culture in general are just, it, 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 is, it, is, a, it is a hole that I don't know that will ever be filled. I don't know that there's anybody that can ever do a better job as batman man yeah it's so sad intestinal cancer too it's it's such a thing like cancer has been really 
taken a lot of the good ones recently. Like I know that it's not gaming related, but um, I don't know if you've seen um, Conda Forever. Or Conda Forever. I ha- we haven't seen it um, because so you know I liked it. Yeah, but I know that you know like the passing of Chadwick definitely makes me kind of melancholy during these times. You know, especially with the movie release. You know, in his honor and things like that. Um, and and just you know the fact that cancer has taken so many great stars recently. Um, and, and also I know he's not really relevant, but rest in peace as well to Aaron Carter. I know that he was fighting his demons pretty hard and he lost his battle. Um, and, and that's very unfortunate. So I know we're doing a little bit of a solemn moment, but we we did lose some, some great people recently and, and it's very, very sad. And I, I hate that. Yeah. So rest in peace, Kevin Conroy, your work will be sorely missed. Everyone go play around for him. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. I kind of want to go play some Arkham games now. Go back and play Arkham City or something. Maybe finish Arkham Knight, actually, because I never actually beat it. (laughs) I love it. It's a great fucking game. I just just never beat it all the way through. I think uh, other things just got in the way. And I almost beat it. I got very close. But we're here to talk about Stray, the uh, independent game developed by uh, Blue 12 Studios. Um, here, let me, I had it pulled up on Wikipedia, but now I don't because I'm dumb. And, uh, Annapurna Interactive, right? Yes, Annapurna Interactive would be the publisher. So yeah, Blue 12 Studio, they don't even have a Wikipedia page themselves. So, uh, brand new, if I, if I remember correctly, this game was supported by Kickstarter. I believe so, yeah, which I think is something that's so incredible. And the fact that people wanted this game so bad, because I remember a couple years ago, there was a video by like one of those little, you know, like Facebook, like pages that like make stuff about like video games. And it was like in development. And I remember hearing about it and I was like, how fun would it be to play a game as a freaking cat? Like, especially me being like the resident, like cat obsessed lover. Like I love my cat and you know, everybody knows that Margot is the queen in my household. <laughs> so I thought it was super freaking cool to be able to do something like that. You know, that was, that was not just a normal game where you're running around as a human or whatever. You're like, you're running around as a little freaking cat. Like, Oh, it's so cute. Yeah. No, I mean, I, the game immediately generated a lot of buzz, uh, right. Yeah. Whenever it was announced. I mean, everybody was really excited to play the fucking cat game, myself included. I just was not doing well financially at the time. I still am not. Fortunately, this game is available with a, uh, a PlayStation Plus uh, Essentials, I believe, or yeah. PlayStation Plus Extras. One, the, the second extra, tier, extra, yeah, yeah, the middle tier. And I actually, I think I have the, I have the, uh, the third tier now because I wanted to go back and play some uh, Resident, classic Resident Evil games. But uh, yeah, funny enough, uh, I already had the subscription because I wanted to play uh, several games for the podcast, including uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, and some Resident Evil titles. So I already had the subscription, and then I realized Stray, the game that we will be talking about, is on it. Yeah, was on it, and I was like, oh fuck yeah! So I don't, I didn't end up having to to pay outright for this game. Although I think I would. Um, yeah, because it's it, worth the forty dollars for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun little game, and it's not long. It's about you know like give or take three three or four hours to play through it normally. There's an achievement, a trophy for playing in under two hours, so that's definitely doable. That is one of the only trophies I have not gotten. So I actually almost platinum this game. Um, I have three trophies left, one of which is beating the game in under two hours, one of which is sleeping in one of the little nap spots for a cumulative total of one hour. Uh, that would require me just sleeping somewhere and setting the controller down for a little bit. I want to do that on the little cowboy hat guy. The other trophy is can't catch me. <sighs> Okay, this trophy is a piece of anal garbage because what you have to do is you have to go through the first chase sequence with the Zerks and not get caught by any of them one time. And they move very erratically, somewhat yeah. randomly. So you kind of have to zigzag and it's just it's just a real pain in the ass. And it's really probably the only thing that is really holding me back because I feel like I could beat this game in under two hours. If you know where to go and you, you have like some of the codes memorized that you need, um, it's definitely doable. But it's like speed running mirror's edge or um, mirror's edge catalyst. Like you can do it. It's just, you have to know where you're going and what you're doing. Yeah. And I did replay through some of the levels and getting some of the other trophies. So, you know, I, I, uh, I, I really think that the, the end product is, uh, it's a lot of fun. I just, maybe, I guess I was expecting more. I don't know why it's an independent project. I think, you know, it's a very well polished project for being independent. It is. Yeah, the fact that it's only a couple of hours, but you get so much packed into that time and, and the, the story that they've created for this, 
I think it's just so incredible that they've done this and the fact that everyone backed it so hard that they were like, if you don't do this, we're going to fucking die. <laughs> like the fact that, you know, this tiny little studio is, is is capable of their first ever game release backed by a Kickstarter and able to get a game of the year award or uh, award nomination is, is pretty fucking incredible, man. And, and good on Blue 12 because this is not... This is something that's definitely in my repertoire, like something that I would play just as a cat lover, but also like the cyberpunk and like sci-fi element of it is yes. super freaking cool. Yeah, and honestly, the story is uh, pretty deep. I mean, we're actually dealing with uh, the, you know, you, you kind of, you get more of the lore the more you play through the game and the more you explore and, and get all the other memories. But I mean, essentially, you've got this walled off city. The apparently uh, was a result of some sort of epidemic or pandemic that happened. I, I think that that's very relevant. I think that that was uh, deliberate. A little bit intentional, yeah. Considering this game's, I think, I think the development time frame, uh, that sounds about right. So, uh, yeah, so apparently some kind of plague wiped out most of the world and the surface was considered uninhabitable. So they built this big walled city. Uh, but apparently the surface is habitable because your protagonist, the unnamed cat... Uh, Stray. <laughs> yeah. Uh with its uh with its family or his family. I think the cat actually is a he. There are characters that refer to the cat with he him pronouns, so just in case no. you were wondering. Um No the, baby boy, little ginger cat. It's a male cat, or at least a cat that identifies with he him pronouns. <laughs> I, I called the cat Rascal because my, my aunt that passed away last year had a little cat that looked just like him. So I was like, all right, Rascal, let's go play. And Margo was so confused because she's like – and that's one of the things that I think is like a requirement. If, if you have a cat cafe, listen, you need to have this game posted up on the wall so all your little cats can just look at the game because it's, it's just an added bonus, okay? It's so freaking cute watching your cat be confused. Also, Ash, I have to know, how fast did you get the 100 meow? <laughs> oh, I mean, that kind of happened naturally throughout the game. I mean, because the, the meow button doesn't do a whole lot. There's only one practical application I can think of for it. But it's just fun that there's a dedicated button for it. So, yeah, I mean, I was meowing throughout the game. And I think I must have been uh, within the last few chapters of the game when the achievement I got it like before halfway through the game because <laughs> I was playing with Margo because the cat would meow and she got all confused. <laughs> I love that, you know, there are a lot of just useless things that you can do. Like, you can meow anytime. You There's can... a dedicated meow button. You can go and you can scratch on surfaces. And there's actually a trophy uh, tied to scratching on one surface per every level of the game. There is at yep. least in every level of the game, there is a surface that is scratchable. Um, and some of the levels are a little bit harder to find it, but it is there. But, yeah, you can do that. You can go and you can sleep in a corner. There's a, a, a trophy attached to that. The fact that you get achievements for being a fucking cat. I love that. Also, you knocking can knock... over paint cans. <laughs> yes, yes. You can knock over paint cans. Um, some of them are actually tied to puzzles. And you can also wreak havoc for the uh, the robot NPCs in this game. You can knock them over like a cat actually would. I like the like one you where can... you jump on their Mahjong game. <laughs> yes. And they're like, <laughs> like hey, Also, I just, I just love how cute how, how like the robots are like... The one I know there's one where like there's the paint spill and he's trying to clean it up. If you run through it, you don't track any paint, but if you walk through it, he stares at you while you track like track paint all over the place. <laughs> yeah, no, the way that the NPCs react to the cat is honestly adorable. Uh there's another another trophy attached to uh uh rubbing up against a certain number of the of the robot NPCs. If you rub against them, um they have a little heart face yes it's so cute they, they love it yeah so it's funny because these robots don't really seem to be very aware of what a cat is but they're just instantly falling they in love, love it him. they just love him so much and i love that it's so freaking cute because it's like even um so there's a girl that I work with, and she's super allergic to cats. Like, she will blow up like a balloon. Oh, yeah. But my uh, buddy and co-host from Collateral Cinema, Robert, is very allergic to cats. He usually will not come to my house. Yeah. Because but every time she sees Margo, like, on my uh, like on my phone, she's like, oh, my God, your cat. I just love your cat. Like, I'm super allergic to her. She'd probably kill me, but I'm in love with her. <laughs> <That's my fault. laughs> No, my, no, my, I think my buddy broke up with his girlfriend because of her cat. Or at least that's that's what he said. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah, Alan was allergic to cats, and then the cat slept on his face for three days, and now we're married for two years. So I don't think the <laughs> allergy is that much of a problem anymore. <laughs> it's like classic, like, dad who doesn't want the cat. 
dad and that the cat. is alan alan is the man who did not want a freaking cat and ended up getting a cat when he got with me and now it's just he loves the cat and the cat's obsessed with him like she stands on the end of the couch when he comes home and just seeks his attention and i'm like mm, so you hate cats huh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. nobody really hates cats you just haven't met no. the right cat um, exactly exactly you yeah, know i grew up with cats and dogs we have uh four cats in the house my mom actually has fostered kittens so I, i've definitely dealt with that as well you know through through her fostering so i love cats uh i, I do too i don't know if i would call myself a cat guy or a dog guy it's kind of hard to say but I, I i love them both and and yeah i was really excited to play the cat and man did they really get the animations spot on i mean the, like the way that falls <laughs> yeah yes everything i mean th- this game was made by cat lovers in fact i believe that uh the game uh was inspired by the developer's cats, Murtaugh and Riggs. Oh, wonder if Murtaugh's that's so precious. Named after the inheritance cycle. Or if it's just... I don't know. I don't know. But but yeah, apparently that was the inspiration for the cats. Um, and, and I do believe that there were cats that were used as the uh, as the model that they, you know, for, yeah. for the cats' movements. So... Uh, re- really cool. That uh, uh, let's see. The gameplay experience was specifically inspired by the founders' cats, Merton Riggs, and the studio's in-house cats, Oscar and Jin. Uh, Murtaugh, oh. a former stray cat found under a car in Monte Montpellier, was the primary inspiration for the protagonist. While Oscar, a furless sphinx, provided effective reference for animation. There you go. Oh my god, a little sphinx! How precious. I love also because. I know that this was, you know, like it's it was developed during the pandemic. Um, a lot of people did end up adopting animals during the pandemic because they were very lonely and they spent a lot more time at home. And there's a lot of of benefits to having an animal in the home. Like I personally, you know, have dealt a lot with depression um, and anxiety. And I know oh, we've yeah. talked about this a lot. And we talk about mental health a lot. And I think it's super important to talk about. Um, if you don't feel like getting out of bed, get yourself a Margo. This cat will wake me up at 6 o'clock in the morning sharp. Just in my door every single morning she makes sure that i wake up and if, if our alarm is going off she freaks out at the door like she goes ballistic at our door like wake up bitches you need to go to work so you can feed my princess ass like it's so <laughs> annoying but it's like i need her in my life like i don't know what i would do without my cat and they always and I love act that- like they're starving <laughs> Yes, yes, all the time, and they're always prisses. Like mine is a priss. I don't know. I, some people don't have prissy cats, but mine is definitely prissy. But the fact that they developed this game, r- surrounding the fact that a lot of people adopted animals during this time, and like the the appreciation for stray animals, and actually, if I remember correctly, actually animal adoptions went up after the release of this game because everyone was like, "Oh my god, I need a cat," and I love that. I wish that there was no more. I know it's an indie developer, but if they do ever produce more cat games, I hope that there is something related to like animal adoptions or animal shelters, just because you know a lot of a lot of stray animals don't get the love that they deserve, and that that's so sad. I hate that. Oh man, I do want to see more from this developer in this series, in this universe, because I mean, think about it. Think about because when this was first announced, I think my brain immediately went to like open world cat game. I want a game where I can just naturally explore around the city. There are certain chapters of this game where you're more able to do that, where it's a little bit more open-ended uh, and yeah. you have the opportunity to kind of sprawl around. But for the most part, the game is very, very linear and it's chapter-based. So you just move from one chapter to the other. There's a specific path through. Um, but there are some detours you can take and there are some extra collectibles. Uh, I know in particular, the the big one is the memories. So when you go back and you finish the game once, it allows you to level select from any one of the chapters and you can go back and, and uh, it even keeps track of what memories are for you know, aren't found in which chapters, which is nice. Uh, there are also badges that you can collect that you can customize your cat with. And if you do get every memory, um, your, uh, your cat's, uh, harness changes and it becomes this yeah. like tie-dye pattern which is cool so i think it's so cool yeah pimp the, your the cat thought out. that they put into it is just so awesome because there are people like i bought margo a halloween costume i don't care she was a little bumblebee she was a little bumble margo but you know i i especially this is going to sound so niche but this game kind of reminded me in in the first part of it um when you're running around with your little cat family of this is gonna sound so niche but i read them because i was a book nerd and i read everything in school the warrior the series Warriors. you remember yep oh my god okay my sister was into those games yes my sister loved oh, not the games i mean sorry the books, the books. my yeah. sister loved the warriors books uh she read i think probably every single one of them and she would talk to me about the events of the books and what happened with uh well it was his name firestar i think it changes a few times 
I, yeah. I, this is going off of secondhand knowledge. This is just what she would tell me while she was reading them. But yeah, no, I, I, I actually, <laughs> I'm very aware of that because my sister was super into those books. I was too. I re- especially because like my parents or my dad is a cat guy. My dad is an old hippie cat guy. Like he, he loves the fact that I got a cat when I was 16 and she's staying with them now back home in Texas. And he's like, man, Meg, Aspen crawled up in my lap today. This is a huge achievement for me. <laughs> it's always nice when you have cats that are a little bit more standoffish and then they warm up to you and they become your person or you become their person and, you know, and then, then they'll sit in your lap and, and, you know, yeah. But no one else can touch them. Yeah, that's that like Aspen was my cat. Now she is my dad's cat. Like she loves my dad. And it's so cute because like my dad is so big and clumsy with his hands that he like pets her and she's like, what do I do? What do I do? I love this. But he's so big. Like she gets intimidated (laughs) by him walking by, but she loves to just be petted by his big hands. It's so funny. So Um, uh, I'm pretty lucky. All my cats are actually very friendly, even with strangers. They're just they're lap cats. They will. They're all cats that will jump in your lap. Uh, when it's their idea, mind you, most most of them don't just like to be manhandled, but they will jump up in your lap and they will ask for attention. And in fact, Inigo, Inigo Montoya, named after the Princess Bride, will uh, will will start getting his claws out. He'll knead and he'll drool because he's just that <gasps> happy. Oh my god, he drools! Yeah, That's and he was so doing cute. it while I was playing this fucking game, and I, I I was trying really hard to get through certain parts of it, so I'd have to push him off, and then I felt bad because like I'm playing the cat game, and I'm like. I'm like pushing my cat off, but <laughs> no. But but when the stray cat falls, I immediately looked at Margot and started like almost crying. So I was like, Aww. "My baby, don't ever leave the house, please, my sweet baby." Yeah, if I recall, there are actually two instances in the game where the cat falls and uh, and, and walks funny for a little while, and then kind of like licks its wounds like a cat does and starts yeah. walking. Yeah. Uh, one of those being when it first initially falls into the city. So it's interesting. You've got this cat who just grew up as a stray in this apparently humanless environment and then falls into this walled city that's just continuing as programmed. The robots are, are there. You know, all the humans are gone, but the robots are just continuing to work as programmed, but they've also become sentient. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Swan, producer at Blue 12 Studio, and today I'm going to show you more about Stray. In Stray, you play as a cat who has fallen inside a mysterious and forgotten city. Separated from his family and injured, he will have to explore and survive in this unwelcoming environment. From the cat's unique point of view, players must navigate their way through the dangers of this unfriendly place and use the cat's skills to solve puzzles and uncover mysteries along the way. Along his journey, the cat will meet a small drone named B12. Using the drone's ability to interact with objects in the world and communicate with the strange inhabitants of this secluded place, together they will work to learn more about the secrets of this forgotten community of human-like machines. Of course a cat will always be a cat, 
and his adventures will be filled with friendly and playful interactions with his new world. But these machines are not the only inhabitants of the city, and some encounters will not be as friendly or safe. Running fast, jumping, and using spells to avoid dangers will all be vital if you want to escape this city and be reunited with family. Prey might become the hunter. Stray is coming to PS4, PS5 as well as PC in early 2022, and we can't wait to show you more. Yeah, I know we were, we kind of got off the subject, but I do think that there's a lot of source material in the Warriors game. So I think that this developer developer should definitely reach out to that lady who writes them because she has like cat ones. She has it gets out from under there. There's another one about polar bears, right? It's called like Seekers or something. Yeah, I remember I mean, my there's sister a was lot not of into source that. Material. There's so much source material. They could definitely go far with like a, a faction of cats, and you get to play as a fucking cat, like. Mm, let me start yeah. a cat fight because I can. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, yeah, the cat obviously doesn't talk because it's a cat. But a sen the cat apparently is sapient. The cat understands language um, of some variety, whatever B12 translates for it. Uh, and, and, and the cat is able to perform tasks as given it, complicated tasks. So the cat yeah. seems to have a uh, kind of human intelligence. Unless we're led to, unless we're, we're supposed to believe that this cat just accidentally did everything that it was told to do. Yeah, no, I don't think so. But cats actually are very intelligent. Um, it's just that, that a lot of times they're assholes about it. You know, cats are like huskies in a lot of ways where they're like, mm, I'll do it. But eventually, like right now, I don't want to do that. Like some of them act like because I I had a cat that played fetch. Like I have I've had dogs that act like cats. There's a whole song about it from Barbie it's from the princess and the pauper. Thank you very much. Uh <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think the way that they implemented B12, which by the way, B12 is just an MVP and I want a personal B12. I know it's, it's another robot droid like thing and I'm not sorry that I'm obsessed, but I'm obsessed. <laughs> and the fact that he lays down with him, I just, whenever, uh... whenever he, he dies or, I mean, there's a little bit of hope because in the beginning of the game, we saw that B12 was interfaced with the city and we see a little flicker of a screen in the very end of the game as the stray cat is uh, returning to the world uh, to find its family. So there is hope that B12 still exists. Uh, B12, the story of B12 is actually really interesting. So we have actually what was originally a human, as mm -hmm. we find out later in the game, who transferred his consciousness into this software. And so basically the last human, actually, as far as we know, right? And, and uh, you know... He just kind of, uh, towards the end of the game, or the very last chapter, he's like, you know, my family died ages ago. I just want you to make it out of here. I just want everybody to know that they don't have to live in this this city anymore. You know, I want to want everybody to know the world is habitable. You know, it, 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 it's a huge character arc. And, and the relationship between B12 and the cat, I think, I guess is most central to this game. I mean, I remember uh, yeah. during the, the jail segment, uh, rescuing B12 is something that the cat actually makes a priority, you know? Yes. 
uh, I'm not leaving without my friend. And, and I, I really love that the relationship that you feel that, that is really just more defined by the interactions and the way that you play the game than anything else. Because mm-hmm. B12 talks to you, right? The cat never talks. The cat demonstrates through its actions its loyalty. Uh, and B12 is also your translator, technically the only character that you actually talk to in some kind of natural language because B12 translates every other character's language for you. Yeah, and it makes me think, I know this is so weird, but it makes me think of, like, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, how there's the monkey thought translator. Like, I wonder if there's, like, some side of, some sort of thing to where, you know, they, he maybe hoped that he could encounter some type of creature besides a human, um, where, you know, he was able to understand and, and translate for them and speak to them, because, you know, like, humans are gone. Like, he was the last human. He's the last sentient being. But, you know, after that, you know, beings are going to continue to evolve and, and have more sentient thoughts now that humans are out of the way. Like, their cats are very intelligent, and I, I have no doubt that he he somehow figured out a way to speak to them. Because, I mean, cats listen to orders. You go tell Margo to sit, and she'll sit. It's, you know, they're they're very smart. Yeah, yeah, no, they are, and they understand things. Yeah, evidently, I guess B12, through its software, was able to find language that was understandable by a cat. I'm not sure, but I do love the relationship. I love uh, some of the other characters, because despite the fact... Clementine! Clementine, yeah. And the other, uh, I think they call them outsiders? Yeah, the other outsiders. So Momo and uh, whatever the fuck that other guy's name was, but, and, and the, the, and Doc... Doc, yes. And his son, yeah. All, you know, in, in their own right, compelling characters with their own character arcs. And I and I thought that it was really interesting to kind of uh, explore this, this world and these robots that are honestly human. Yeah, they're learning how to become their own, their own beings. And it's so, they're so precious because they just, they're very wholesome. And they're very much like, you know, like the, the one is, like I said earlier, you know, running through the paint, he's mad. But then if you mount him later, he gets all happy. Because just because you're near him. Just because you're a cute little cat. Like, Aww. there's a lot of aspects in this game that I just love because it's like, it's it's a very wholesome game. And it's a very much like, especially compared to a lot of the the tragedies and things that have happened in the past couple of years and the, and, the, and the tragedies and games we've had. <clears throat> Horizon, I'm talking to fucking you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I think it's, it's so cool that we have this wholesome moment because the game definitely shatters your heart into a billion fucking pieces within the first couple minutes. But then it's like you get more wholesomeness out of it and like you get to be with these little robots that are learning how to be their own beings and they just don't understand but they love to be happy and they love to love and it's so freaking cute yeah i know i mean the game actually really focuses on the the narrative element the exploration element the game is decidedly non-combative i mean there's not a lot of combat to speak of uh the only really enemy characters are the zerks who will latch on to you and for most of the game you're just trying to run away from uh and the sentinels who are are kind of more uh encompass the stealth segments of the game but there there really isn't much combat to speak of other than for a period of time between a a couple chapters uh you have the defluxer which you can use to to kill the zerks but it overheats after using it for like a few seconds yeah it's not very effective yeah so the game is the game is is decidedly more focused on uh, the exploration, the puzzle solving, and the narrative aspects. And I really enjoy that. Uh, it's kind of like Mirror's Edge, uh, which you mentioned earlier in that respect, and that it, it decidedly has a focus. Uh, the parkour as well. I mean, with the cat, it, it's actually pretty simple. Most of all, the parkour is managed with a single button, so you press X, and the cat slinks over to, the, to its next jumping point. But it's just like a cat. And yeah. I loved being able to explore the city. I loved some of the ways that you could go in and out of houses and other areas. And you would think that, like, the okay, if there's this door, this window in front of you with these small holes in it. Like, I can't get through that. You know, you're used to thinking through other games. But no, I'm a cat. I'm small. Yeah. I can go through that little hole. <laughs> cats are liquid. You don't understand. Cats are liquid. <laughs> yes, I loved that. I loved, you know, just being able to just kind of move around. And, and some of the areas in the game uh, are, really are, are, are built towards that. Like there is the slums, which you revisit a couple times, and then Midtown. Mm-hmm. Uh, just really a lot of fun areas that are just these like cyberpunk, sci-fi uh, environments that you're moving across. As a cat. It's like something out of Altered Carbon, almost, you know, like the cityscape of how, like the slums in, in Altered Carbon. It's very, very similar to that. And I love, I love, love, love that show. Like that show is one of my favorites. And those, those steampunk, like cyberpunk kind of things are very, very much like an aesthetic that I love. So the fact that the whole game is based in this for large periods of time, I'm like, yes, 
Yeah. Good. The puzzles are very straightforward. I mean, they're in a sense kind of like Resident Evil puzzles. I mean, you kind of, okay, grab this item, use this here. Um, but there were a couple of them that were head scratchers that took me a little bit. And, and I think the game excels in the parts where it's a little bit more open-ended. And you have, you know, like the slums that you can uh, wander around and, and accomplish all of these side quests while you're there. Yeah, I, I love that there's just so many different ways for you to explore and be a fucking cat. Like, you can just, you can run around the city and be like, mm, there's somebody, like the one, like the cowboy hat. That's like one of my favorite ma- moments in the game. He's just chilling there and you can just like stop and turn around and go lay on him. And he's just like, oh, and he does a little heart face and you can just pet him. And I just, mm, mm, You also get that. to commit theft. You get to steal from yes. stores in order yes. to uh, to infiltrate the uh, the factory. And that, that was actually kind of a fun moment of the game that you kind of had to think about. Is there's a, there's a robot character over in a bar that you have to wake up by knocking shit over. As you as you do as a cat, right? As a cat, and you go follow it. You jump in the box, which up until that point there wasn't much use to the boxes. You weren't sure what they were there for. But here's this is what they're there for. You jump in the box, and he picks the box up, drags you into the into the shop, and then you can go and uh, and steal the hat that you need and come out. Uh, there's another part where you can, if you take down these security cameras, and I thought this was a side quest at first. I thought it was optional. Then uh, you pick up a cassette tape. You use that cassette tape to distract the shop owner while you go steal the other thing that you need the clothes and then you go infiltrate the factory and there's this whole like stealth segment where you're trying to avoid the sentinels and uh, it requires more jumping in boxes so they turned a thing that uh, that the cats do into an actual in-game mechanic yes like the the thought process of these developers is so fucking cool because it's like you think about things that cats would do because cats will like margo if i'm eating like pieces of chicken then I leave it on the edge of my plate. That cat will go and steal that freaking chicken. Don't get me wrong. Like, she will eat pieces cats of cheese. Cats are assholes. They will they're grab They're assholes, food. man. But they're so <laughs> lovable. It's like you're a little furry thing with claws. But damn it, I love you so much. Like, it's not fair. Or knock things off just, just for the sake of it. Um, just fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I love that you can do that. All of these different things that you can do as a cat. Uh, and have actually been turned into puzzles or into useful things or yeah. at least you know trophies to achieve within the game in order to get you know that 100 percent completion so you can do almost everything there is to do in this game within a day or two honestly yeah and it's, it's not kinda, long it's kind of what makes me want more of it it's like i want to see more of these good ideas implemented because i i, yeah. I get hints of that you know and i just i just want a whole like a full-fledged sequel to this game that's decidedly more open-ended you know give me like a full open world cat experience i need it blue 12. yeah give me more cities or something you know like find a central hub and then like be able to like go and free more cities and meet more of these robots and stuff like i think that would be because it's wall city 99 there's 98 more of them Right, at least, yeah, as far as we know. And it would be interesting to kind of, you know, kind of take uh, an approach to the next game where it's like, okay, we're trying to get the message out to other cities across the world and let people know, like, hey, you can come out and maybe there actually are some humans. Yeah, I mean, there's so much open-ended to this that I think there's there's a lot of potential for them to make um, more content. And, and even, you know, like, I know that it's cats, but there there are no games with dogs either. So maybe, you know, like one with, with dogs or, or well, other, you know. Kami. Yeah. And that's Twilight true. Princess. Oh yeah, but they don't I don't know, they don't act much like like but like technically those are both dogs. Wolves, so Yeah, yeah. Like I would love to see a dog like Lola with her fat chunky ass just roll around and distract something like a robot. That would be so fucking cute. Yeah, I want a domestic house dog game actually. That would be so like I don't want Nintendo dogs. I want a dog running around in a cyberpunk city. Are you kidding me? Yeah. How cute would that be? How about a dog in a fantasy setting? Like, let's switch it up a little bit. Oh, we'll have a dog that goes on 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 uh, within within a typical game where you where your normal char- player character would go on quests. You know, it's just like medieval fantasy setting. But you're you're the dog. Yeah, you're the companion. Oh, that would be so freaking cool! Like you have to like go get something for your master, like go pick up his sword or whatever. Just like playing the game as the companion. Or like you're the dog in Fable. <laughs> oh my god! Or freaking uh, what's his name? Dog meat. Yeah, from uh, from Fallout. Yeah. Oh yeah. God, that would be so fun. That there's so, the, and and I hope that the development of this game leads more into something that's not you know like a, a lot of games you you know use humans or some like creatures that are bipedal for example. Like I think Mass Effect, in my honest opinion, would be the most like straightforward with like moving into things that don't 
quite exist within like mechanics that we have. Like you have the Hanar, for example, which are giant, like four legged looking like jellyfish motherfuckers. Um, you know, and, and they have like, you know, like the Turians that, that they're not quite human and the way that their, their muscles move when they speak. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of development that's been made to where I think you could definitely go into more in depth and detail to create different types of games. You know, it's something that people haven't played a thousand times before. I feel like there's a lot of games with these, you know, like, like, for example, like we were talking about with the game awards, you know, I love Ragnarok. I love the fact that, you know, they're creating a sequel. I love forbidden West. I love all of those games, but to have something like this, that's a little bit different that sets a company aside like this. Like there's a lot of directions they can go for sure. Yeah, 100%. I'm actually really excited to see where the studio goes in the future, because this is the first thing that they've ever done, Blue 12. By the way, B12 is named after Blue 12, if you didn't pick up on that. Yeah, I did. Of course, I always thought of the vitamin, because I work in healthcare, but, you know, it's fine. And, and and fun fact, the developers of this game actually opted to forego their full names in the credits um, so that they would avoid interviews. They just credited Aww. themselves as Kula and Viv. And uh, yeah, and it was this was basically the the project between them and and the team of designers. I mean, it seems like it was a pretty small team uh, developed using Unreal Engine four, and uh, this game was released for PS four, PS five, and PC. So if you have one of those consoles, I would definitely check it out. This is a fun little adventure game developed by a small team. It's and a good game to unwind to too. Yeah, yeah, and it definitely. I, I actually, I'll tell you what. When I was playing God of War in preparation for God of War Ragnarok, and even when I started playing Ragnarok, and I would get to a particular part of the game that was just really kicking my ass, I would de-stress by playing, by playing Stray. Yeah, it's yeah. I I definitely want more of this this type of game because I feel like this is this is definitely a game that could be turned into one of those cozy style games too, um, where you just live life as a stray cat. I'm sure they have plenty of content for that, but also just like uh, it's it's very much not as intense, you know, because God of War is is a very intense game. Like there's there's a lot of emotions, there's a lot of things being pulled into those narratives. Um, there's a lot of lore there, but with something like this, there's really not. And and I really think that there's a lot of directions that they could go with this, but I. I love the fact that you can de-stress to a game that still is kind of stressful, but it's fun. Like, this game was so fun. Yes, it is totally fun, and any cat lover is going to immediately fall in love with this game. Even non-cat lovers. I understand why it was nominated. I mean, this game definitely did generate a lot of hype. And I think yeah. for an indie project, it's very well polished, and it's surprisingly deep. And, you know, I just kind of I just kind of want more out of it. And, and yeah. I'd love to see what Blue 12 would do in the future. I mean, any final thoughts on Stray? Um, it's worth your $40 for sure um, if, if you're just spending it outright. I mean, if not, if you have the extra tier, it's worth the play. Um, this game is something like you'll never play ever. Like, it's its its own experience, and I, I could not wait. I remember the moment that the game released. I texted Ash, and I was like, Ash, if we don't cover this, I'm going to riot. Like, I love this game. I'm obsessed, and I was watching streams of it, and I was just so obsessed because I'm a huge cat lover. I'm a huge animal person. Everybody knows this, and I, I always, you know, try and advocate for, you know, stray animals and all things like that because I, just, I love animals especially cats like cats are so misunderstood all of the time and i hope that you know you you play this and and you um you definitely also appreciate an indie developer because this studio is so fucking awesome and i i love their first game i want more content i want more of this universe i want more of all of the things that come with the, with this with this game in general um and i think it's definitely definitely worth the play this is one of our top contenders for like should play this season for sure yes i agree yeah, I, I would definitely have to echo everything you said. And I think that this game, while maybe not deserve Game of the Year... It I, deserves I think the nom. It, it did deserve the recognition, the the uh, the hype and buzz that it got from being, by being a nominee. And I think that it, it sh there are some awards that it should could definitely win that it deserves. I mean, uh, specific awards. Uh, and yeah. so uh, I'm happy that I played this. I'm happy that we played it. I think we timed it well. It's, mm -hmm. again, a... Just a fun little short adventure game with a lot of promise and a lot of heart. It is like good job B12. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna shout them out as that because they'll probably change their name to that later. Um, uh, good job to them and 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 definitely lots of applause. And I I hope that they are celebrating right now because they definitely deserve this recognition for for their different and forward way of thinking. This is the most forward thinking game I've seen this year, and I love it so 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 much that I, I just, I want another game so bad. I'm so ready for the next chapter. 
By the way, did you know that there's a uh, there's an actual Kowloon walled city in uh, China that was originally a Chinese yeah. military fort that was the inspiration. Yeah. So that, that's actually I think pretty that's cool. So wild. There, there's a real there's a real place that this was inspired by. But yeah, love the setting, love the gameplay. Uh, I really have nothing negative to say at all about uh, about Stray, other than that, yeah. you know, I, I just I just want to see more. I, I just want to I want to really dig deep and and get like a full fledged game with with the budget that that something like this deserves. Yeah, no, I think that's my only that's my only negative is I want more. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But folks, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or feedback on your platform of choice. You can find Collateral Gaming wherever you listen to your podcasts. We are on Apple, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. Uh, we are also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, which surprisingly is still a thing. So <laughs> we shall see. Moving yeah. forward. Um, like I said, I think on a recent Collateral Cinema episode. I don't think that Twitter was ever in danger of just collapsing in on itself. Like people thought, I think there's at least enough of em uh, employees to manage that. But I think that more likely what's going to happen is it's going to turn to shit real quick because you don't have nearly enough employees to for quality control and to, to maintain quality. So Exactly. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But we're there and we're not going anywhere because Twitter is the place to be for podcasts. So if you want to give us a follow on Twitter, uh, you can also check out our Facebook group, Collateral Media Podcasts, uh, where it's kind of our shit posting group. So yeah, we post, post a lot of memes. Yeah, you can post memes there, news. Uh, you can post on there. That's your space to interact with us. Um, I end up cross-posting almost everything I post to the respective Facebook pages to the group. Yeah, same. Yeah, same. And yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, next time, we are talking about God of War Ragnarok. God of War! Uh, I've been playing the shit out of that game, man. The Nord I... in me is so excited. I'm freaking. I love the fact that we're getting so deep in Norse mythology. I'm like, let's freaking go. So part one this month is going to be our spoiler-free game launch review. So we are going to give basically our first impressions about the game, and then we're finishing up in uh, December as our holiday special. So we're towards the end of the month uh, by. Christmas Eve or Christmas, we'll have part two of Ragnarok out. That's where we're going to go into full spoiler territory uh, and really just give this game the attention that it deserves because, man, is this everything I expected and more out of a sequel to 2018's God of War, which I took the, the time to sort of play, play through again, replay, but I didn't get all the way through and then Ragnarok came out and that's been sucking up all of my time, that yeah. <laughs> all my free time, mm -hmm. I should say. <laughs> it's so fucking good. I'm just going to say that. Ragnarok is so fucking good. And it, it I can't wait to talk about it. Uh, but yeah, we'll have that out by the end of the month. And then next month, um, we will, uh, for our numbered episodes, we're going to be doing uh, The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. The uh, 3DS sequel to A Link to the Past. And uh, one of the Zelda games that I got uh, on release day and 100 percented probably within a few weeks of getting it. As as Ash does. May, may have been the first Zelda game I ever 100 percented actually come to think of it. I remember, I just, all I remember is staying up to the middle of the night trying to play that stupid fucking baseball minigame. <laughs> <laughs> but, and uh, Dan the Man Rockwood is going to be joining us for that episode. And uh, oh, I'm Dan. really excited to have Dan. him. Yeah, he was on our Resident Evil 2 episode. Uh, the, uh, the Resident Evil 2 remake part if of If you don't episode. love Dan, you're wrong. Let's just say that. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's, Dan, the, he's the and freaking and VIP out here. If you're listening, man, it's going to be awesome to collaborate with you once again in Victims and Villains. On the Collateral Cinema side, we're also going to be uh, doing our annual Christmas special with Captain Nostalgia. So uh, being able to talk about Kirk Cameron saving Christmas christmas with josh <laughs> is gonna be a lot of fun because uh as a christian i want to know what your if you're listening man i want to know what your take on that game is <laughs> oh that man movie is. <laughs> but yeah guys thank you so much for listening and being a part of the podcast i, I think that we are quickly approaching ten thousand downloads oh my gosh are we I think we're getting pretty close. Collateral Cinema reached over 10,000 this last season. And uh, Collateral Gaming is 
we're I think we're I think we're we're hot on the heels actually. We're not far off. We actually do get a fair amount of uh downloads even when we haven't released anything that week, I've noticed. Wow, well thanks everybody. We're yeah. we're honored. People listen to to our shit and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Yeah, thanks for letting us ramble. <laughs> Podcast. Let's see. We're at 9400. So Holy cow. Uh, almost, uh, I, th- I want to say a cumulative total of 20,000 downloads between both podcasts. So Dang, thank we're you cool. so much. And we're really excited. Uh, like I said, God of War Ragnarok. Whew, oh, it's going to be another Ghost of Tsushima moment. Just talking about that. It's going to be fun because uh, God of War 2018 was uh, the first episode that you were on along with Yeah, Alan. I know. I know. I can't wait. And Alan actually said he's interested in uh, in being on this episode. I know he hasn't been on the season. Y'all, he went from graduating from, from a second degree to just going straight into the field. There's some nights where he doesn't come home until 10. So, you know, he's he's been listening in on a lot of the episodes and he's here in spirit, but he does want to be on the Ragnarok episode. So we'll get a resurgence of the duo of Gomez's. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> and I cannot wait. Like, I'm so freaking excited. Like, it, it it feels like almost full circle, and I love it so much because I love God of War. And, you know, I've come to love the podcast so much. You know, I just, it's one of my favorite things to talk about. I'm like, yeah, I'm on a podcast. Like, it's pretty fucking cool or whatever, you know? And in fact, people want to listen to me and listen to me talk about stuff just feels so awesome. Like, I'm glad that you like my opinion. And I like that I get to to do this with you and, and everybody. It's it's a lot of fun, and I love the podcasting world. Like, it's it's a blast. Yeah, we are really excited about this upcoming season. We've got uh, a lot of uh, of bangers, and uh, it's going to be very fun and exciting. Uh, Zach was actually almost done this episode. He was talking about how uh, he actually had access to Stray and wanted to play it, but uh, hopefully we will be... Well, I mean, we'll, we'll have him on our Link Between Worlds episode, because that's his episode for sure. Yeah. I know. I haven't had an episode with Zach in like six episodes. It's I'm been like, a while since I've had guy? you both, actually. I know. It, it, it was kinda, like the beginning of the season. <laughs> it, it's usually one or the other nowadays, but we'll. I think I think we should all be t- together for Zelda month because I wanted to make a Zelda month kind of a thing. Have you have you played Link Between Worlds? It's been the hottest minute of all hot minutes, but I have. Okay. Do you have a 3ds? No, no, not anymore. Oh, all right. Well, if you've played it before, maybe watch some playthroughs, then maybe we'll, we'll be ready for it. We'll be alright. We'll be alright. But come yeah, on, guys. Now. I'm also a resident Zelda genius. Let's get real. Hell yeah. I mean, that's kind of what we bonded over originally. And I, I think what, what led to you getting on the podcast is I remember back in the day, I mean, we talked about Zelda. All the freaking time, yes. But, folks, thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of this experience. We will see you next time for Ragnarok. <laughs> that being said, I'm Ashley Chancellor. And I'm Megan Gomez. This has been Collateral Gaming. We are out. Goodbye.
Collateral Gaming is a collateral media podcast. All music and game clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.